screen 60 times a second. Every time a screen refresh, I can type in a new character, enter a new character at the right point. I had to wait until the, all, the whole screen shifted around all of its characters and stick in the right one. 60 characters a second. That was great for going over a modem to the ARPANET. Modems were only 30 characters a second anyway. So it was an optimized design. But now, in the age of the microprocessor, a microprocessor could do a million things a second. You need much faster. You need to be able to update anything on the screen instantly. And that led to this idea of, you know, I was working on it and working on it in my head. Why don't I use the exact same memory, the dynamic memory that the microprocessor talks to? Why don't I make a part of that come out and get and put on the screen all the time? What an easy, easy solution it was. I mean, it might seem easy now, but, you know, when you're doing it, it's just not the way it was ever done before. It was a huge advantage. So the Apple II was really designed as a good, fast computer from the ground up. Color was another memory trick. I was real sleepy one night, and I don't know, I saw an exhibit at Atari. I hadn't slept for four days and nights, designing breakout at Atari. And there on the floor was a little dot moving left and right on the screen, bouncing back and forth, changing color, like a rainbow. All their other TVs in Atari were black and white for all their games. Changing color, I was mesmerized. It was like a light show, you know, hypnotic light show or something. And I realized they, later they must have put mylar, colored mylar, red, green, yellow, blue on the screen. So I went back and I'm sitting there at a, one lab table. I remember where Steve Jobs was, was wire wrapping my design. And, and this idea popped in my head. Put four little bits in a four little bit chip register. What are the common chips that I use? Spin it around and the bits repeat themselves. One, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero. Repeats itself forever. And what comes out is a signal that goes up and down and up and down. Like color TV signals do. I remember my high school electronics. Why don't I? Maybe if I spun this chip at the exact right rate, that'd be interpreted as color. But I can put 16 codes in. Maybe I'll wind up with 16 colors. And the story is, it worked. And you know, of course, when Steve Jobs and I saw it. So four little bits of using the right memory did a lot more than tons, a hundred, a thousand dollars worth of, you know, logic and two boards with a hundred chips on them each and all these analog, uh, you know, mixing signals according to calculus formulas would do. Another incident that involved memory was, well, we started out with the Apple II and I thought, well, I have no money. How do you store programs? What's your long-term storage? And it was, write it onto a cassette tape because cassette tapes are free. How much time we got? Zero? Zero. Zero? I'm going to finish just this one story and we'll be done. I had, I had lots more pages, but don't worry. Another time. Okay, so the floppy disk. Um, it turns out that um, we were at a, we had an executive staff meeting at Apple. 1978, January of 78, they were going to allow personal computer companies, Apple, Commodore, Radio Shack, into the CES show in Las Vegas, the City of Lights. Three people would go, our marketing guy, our sales guy, and Steve Jobs. And I'm too shy to say, I want to go. So, but I'm tricky. So I said, it was, the show was two weeks away. I said, if we have a floppy disk, can we show it? And I had no plans. I had no knowledge of how to make a floppy disk drive controller. But I wanted to go to Vegas. <laughs> you got to choose the right motivation. And, and we wound up. I got to stop now. Sorry. Very sorry to leave. Berkeley under a fake name because my name was known. 
but not my face so much. And I used the name Rocky Raccoon Clark. They typed that in the And the teachers all called me Rocky. I loved that year. Wonderful year. So I and I, so I got my degree. The diploma says Rocky Raccoon Clark. <laughs> I have a number of I have a number of other honorary degrees, and to each one of those, I'm very loyal to all those schools. A lot of great, great colleges that don't like me. <laughs> well, two, two things. One, he's shy, but he's been a great benefactor for UC Berkeley. Two, you are correct. It was my bar on these target screens, and the Bernacci say hello. <laughs> uh, thanks. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Fine. I'll be around. Yeah.